Hello, everyone. It is 5.30 on May 26th, and this is the interim meeting for the New Hanover County Board of Education. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Ms. Adams, would you please call the roll? Lisa Eastep. Here. David Wartman. Here. Stephanie Adams. Here. Nelson Bollier. Here. Judy Justice. Ms. Justice. Jeanette Nichols. Here. Bill Rivenmar. Mr. Rivenmar. I'm here. Ms. Justice, are you here? Ms. Justice, are you here? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. okay. All right. Great. We have all board members accounted for. All right, again, welcome. And thank you to, and hello to everyone who is tuning in online. Okay. Moving on to item C, the invocation, moment of reflection. Uh, yesterday we, as a country, observed Memorial Day and I would ask that we take a moment to remember all those who get, uh, have given their lives uh, in honor and service to this beautiful country. May they rest in peace. I'd also like to take this moment to thank everyone who is currently serving, has served, or is getting ready to serve. We do have uh, students who will be graduating and going on uh, to go into our armed forces. So again, thank you for helping to keep our country safe. Item C, invocation. I'm sorry, item D, moment of remembrance. On Wednesday, May 20th, last Wednesday, we lost a, a former member of this board. Uh, Dorothy DeShields served two terms uh, on the New Hanover County Board of Education from 2004 to 2012. Before that time, she was a New Hanover County Schools educator and administrator, and uh, one of her many accomplishments was uh, serving as the first principal uh, of Gregory School of Science, Math, and Technology. Uh, Mr. Shields was a, a longtime advocate for education in this county, and our thoughts are with her family at this time. So let us take a moment now just uh, to reflect and remember. Thank you. Item two, approval of the agenda. Are there any changes, additions, deletions? Hearing none, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve. Move to approve. There's a motion for Mr. Bullier. Is there a second? Second. A uh, second from Ms. Justice. Uh, 
cute. I don't have my little cute cute. Uh, Miss Adams, how do you vote? Miss Adams? I. Oh. I. Mr. Boyer? Aye. Miss Justice? Aye. Uh, Miss Nichols? Aye. Mr. Ravenbart? Aye. Mr. Wartman? Aye. And I vote aye. The agenda is approved. Item three, closed session. I would like a motion to go into closed session pursuant to, do we have that? If, if you click on the item. Oh, sorry. I'm still not used to this. Thank you. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A13 and 6, to consult with the board's attorney to preserve, preserve the attorney-client privilege, to consider personnel matters, and to maintain the confidentiality of personnel records under North Carolina General Statutes 115C-319 and 321. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Bullier made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Adams is the second. Uh, Ms. Adams, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Bullier? Aye. Ms. Justice? Aye. Uh, Ms. Nichols? Ms. Nichols? We'll come back to her. Uh, Mr. Ravenbark? Aye. Mr. Wartman? Aye. I vote aye. Ms. Nichols, do we have you? Aye. All right, great. <laughs> Unanimous. We are well. in closed session. Here. Here. We got one here. We do have a quorum though, correct? We've got four. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. We'll make sure. Can you hear me now? Yes, yep. ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we're just waiting for Mr. Wartman. I'm glad somebody understands this technology. This is extremely confusing. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. <laughs> it's really confusing. Not sure if we're doing it right. <laughs> That's the problem for me anyway. He is? Now it works. 
All right, great. Wouldn't unmute. All right. Thank you, everyone, for rejoining us. Uh, we are on item number four, information item A, high school 2020 graduation update. Uh, this is Dr. Burns and Dr. Smith. Madam Chair, members of the board, this evening we're going to provide an update to you regarding the graduation for the class of 2020. Um, Dr. LaShawn Smith has headed two task forces, one for traditional high schools and one for non-traditional high schools. The task forces are comprised of the senior class president, the faculty class advisor, and the principal from each of the high schools, as well as, in addition to Dr. Smith, the Director of Secondary Education and the Director of Safety from New Hanover County Schools. A representative from New Hanover County Public Health has also been meeting um, with the task forces over the past few weeks. With the move on May 5th to phase one, we have paid close attention to the directive of the order um, and the guidance that came from the Department of Public Instruction. With Executive Order 141 issued on May 20th, um, there was information provided, and I'd like to, to review it. Um, the documents are provided in, in the agenda if you choose to click on them. Section 7 of Executive Order 141 addresses mass gatherings, and a1 prohibition states mass gatherings are prohibited. Mass gatherings um, are defined as an event or a convening that brings together more than 10 people indoors or more than 25 people outdoors at the same time in a single confined indoor or outdoor space such as an auditorium, stadium, arena, or meeting hall. This includes parades, fairs, and festivals. In publicly accessible indoor facilities, the mass gathering limit applies per room of the facility. A household where more than 10 people reside is not a mass gathering. There's additional information provided under that section. In number two, exceptions from prohibition on mass gatherings. Um, notwithstanding subsection A1 above, which I read from, the prohibition on mass gatherings does not apply to any of the restricted businesses and operations identified in section six of this executive order, because in those situations, transmission of COVID-19 will be controlled through the measures specifically tailored for each situation that are listed in those sections. The prohibition on mass gatherings also does not apply to educational institutions or government operations. The guidance that followed that came in the form of a frequently asked questions for Executive Order 141, also issued on May 20th. Specifically on page seven, the question, are in-person high school graduation ceremonies allowed in phase two? Phase two lists the stay at home order, but strongly encourages individuals to maintain at least six feet social distancing from other individuals. Phase two also limits an event that brings together more than 10 people indoors and 25 people outdoors. Educational institutions are exempt from these mass gathering requirements. The intent of this exemption was to allow educational institutions the ability to gather more individuals together on their premises, if necessary, to support planning for summer learning and for the 2020-2021 school year. This exemption was not intended to allow for large in-person events such as graduation ceremonies. Accordingly, the Governor's Office and North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services strongly recommend that local school leaders continue to follow the COVID-19 guidance on high school graduation ceremonies originally issued on May 1, 2020, and the recommendations to promote social distancing and to reduce transmission outlined in Executive Order 141. These continued efforts will support local education leaders as they mitigate the spread of COVID-19 
when considering how to safely and responsibly honor graduating students. This response provides clarification on mass gathering exemption for educational institutions and does not change or override the terms of any executive order. On May 1st, the Department of Public Instruction issued guidance on high school graduation ceremonies, which we have been discussing as well, and they share examples of potentially permissible graduation ceremonies as of May 1, indicating that orders of the governor and other requirements of local public health departments are to be followed. Included as examples are drive-in ceremonies, drive-through ceremonies, individualized ceremonies, and a hybrid video ceremony. The task force has met a number of times and um, there has been a great deal of discussion. The students have done a good bit of work as well as the other members of the task force. Um, to this point, Carla Turner from the Department of Public Health has been involved and I believe Ms. Turner is on the line and is available this evening um, for comments and questions. Also, Deborah Stagner, your board attorney, has been consulted and I do believe Ms. Stagner has consulted with other attorneys regarding the matter. So before I, I turn it over to Dr. Smith, um, Ms. Stagner um, or Ms. Turner, would either of you like to share any comments or clarify any of the information that I have shared so far? While we're um, navigating the technical difficulties, um, there, will be, <laughs> there will be another meeting of the task forces this week to further consider phase two and, and the information that's been provided. It is anticipated that at the June 2nd meeting, there will be an opportunity for the board to take action regarding graduation for the class of 2020. Okay, so Ms. Stagner, I'll start with you. If you could let us know if you have any uh, comment or um, anything you'd like to share. Otherwise, we'll move to Ms. Turner and then go to Dr. Smith. Um, thank you, Dr. Burns. Uh, I, uh, the, the guidance that you've read and the executive order, I, I think are not, um, as clear as we would like them to be in giving direction to the school board. I think it is the clear intention and direction of the governor's office in, in issuing those that um, the mass gathering limits do apply for graduations. Although, uh, again, the guidance is not as clear as, as we would perhaps like. There are also the fact that the prior executive orders referenced the um, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services guidelines. Um, I believe there have not been guidelines issued specifically as to graduations, although there are guidelines for large outside venues and uh, those were just issued uh, as well on Friday. So there are a number of different pieces of guidance and orders to, to read in conjunction with each other. Um, and, and so uh, that's where we are right now. I think there is certainly concern and, um, and guidance from the governor's office that the graduation ceremonies are intended, were intended to be uh, continued, continue to be covered by the executive order. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Turner, anything you'd like to comment on or clarify? 
Uh, no, Dr. Burns, thank you. No, I agree with both you and Ms. Stagner. Um, I believe, you know, the FAQ clearly states that graduation ceremonies were not meant to be part of the exemption from mass gathering limits. And, and what I just want people to understand is being part of that committee, I mean, those, those students are willing to look at other ways of doing things. Um, but from a public health standpoint, we just have to make sure that whatever's done, it can be done in the safest way possible to protect people the best we possibly can. And by that, I mean following what the governor's order allows us to do. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Smith, if you would please talk about the task force's um, process and progress. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Chairperson, members of the board, Dr. Burns, and probably most important, members of the graduation task forces who are watching this evening. I would like to begin by first thanking the members of our two task forces for their commitment to the process of determining a way forward to celebrate our graduates in a way that memorably honors their achievements and hard work with both family and friends while being compliant with all mass gatherings and CDC um, distancing, social distancing restrictions. From the beginning, the district recognized that student voice would be a critical part of these task forces. Principals, as Dr. Burns stated, at all of our high schools were contacted and asked to reach out to their senior class presidents, knowing that these students would be much better positioned to gauge what was most important to our graduating seniors. Understanding that the needs for our traditional and non-traditional high schools were very different, the decision was made to have two task forces to ensure that the needs of one group did not overshadow the needs of the other. Also, as um, Dr. Burns stated earlier, um, other important voices in this work were our senior class advisors and also a representative from the Department of Public Health. Ms. Carla Turner, who you just um, heard from. Keeping both these groups well informed was her primary role. She provided us with updates um, and connected us to the latest information regarding public health. Other key members of the task force were our Director of Safety, Mr. Dave Spencer, and our Director of Secondary Education, Mr. Al O'Brien. Prior to our first meeting, the district launched a student parent survey. 1,569 responses were received, and this information was used to inform our first meeting, along with the guidance from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction regarding high school graduations. Our non-traditional um, graduation task force began meeting on May 5th, with the second meeting on May 12th. The traditional graduation task force held its first meeting on May 6th, and we also have met on May 13th and May 21st. Both groups are scheduled to meet tomorrow to finalize our recommendation. To inform our discussion, students have conducted multiple surveys, spoken with their classmates, and conducted, excuse me, and connected through social media. Students are clear in that their desire is for the most traditional um, graduation possible and as soon as possible. This is also the desire of the district. There is little interest in a December graduation or a virtual graduation. Students have prioritized safety, family, and friends as critical components of any graduation ceremony. Our discussions have looked at multiple venues and several different options for a ceremony. We have paid close attention to what is happening in our state and also in adjacent states. Our students have had an active voice in this task force and in this process. There have been very frequent, robust, and passionate conversations, which I have no doubt will lead to a recommendation that represents what is most important to our students, their families, and their friends. We look forward to bringing you a recommendation on June 2nd for your consideration. Madam Chair, members of the board, if there are questions, we'll do our best to respond. 
Any questions? I'd like to thank Dr. Smith for her leadership with this. Um, th this is very important and um, it is taken as such and having the involvement of students and building level folks, the principals, the faculty advisors for the class of 2020, I think has been very beneficial. And so Dr. Smith, thank you for your effort. Mm -hmm. I, I have some questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Smith, did, did anyone from the task force reach out to Pitt County and the, the other counties that are doing traditional graduations in, a, in kind of a different way? Yes, sir. Um, I actually received um, two email correspondences from Pitt County today. Um, okay. And what was shared with me is that they are still in the process of considering the guidance from the governor's office. Um, they shared with me their draft um, okay. graduation proposal but did indicate um, in the very last email that I received today that it was still under consideration. Um, we also, um, Ms. Turner reached out to, to districts, our students reached out to districts. Um, um, I'm trying to think some other districts that we, um, I'm also a member of the large district consortium and um, I consulted with those districts as well um, and then we had um, pending information from, um, I think it was Mr. Al Bryant reached out to, to Pender County Schools and we're waiting for a response back to, to, to them. So um, uh, several folks did reach out to, to several different districts to find out what they were doing, yes. Okay, because it's, it's my understanding that Pitt County is actually moving forward with their proposal because I, I talked to them today. Um, and instead of doing whole high school graduations, they're gonna actually split them into um, either one or two groups and then spread them out on, the, on a football field. So I, I would also be interested in what Ms. Turner's opinion is in terms of if you were able to hold a traditional graduation on a football field, keeping students six feet apart and um, having their guests, two people, and then six people apart wearing masks. Is that something that, that's been considered? And how would the county health um, department feel about that? Because I, I think the guidance from the governor is, is very, it certainly is not clear as, as Ms. Stagner said. Um, if you read the order, it, it certainly allows, um, allows a, a, a local um, school community to do what they want based on the fact that they're strongly recommending something. Not, I think if they didn't want them, they would say, um, not to do them. So I'd be interested in hearing from Ms. Turner as well. And she may not, might, may we, not be available. I think she's still on the line. Is she, on, is she able to unmute Ms. Turner? Call her. Thank you. Can y'all hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mr. Worman, we have talked about that, and we have we have spoken at length at the health department. I've talked with um, David Howard, our deputy health director, and Lisa Brown, our preparedness coordinator, who has served as our incident commander with Unified Command and our emergency operations center, and we see it both ways. Like I, I shared with Dr. Smith earlier, my heart wants to give these students a a face to face graduation. My public health brain tells me that is going to be difficult to do to guarantee that people are not going to be potentially exposed to somebody. Um, I know up at, up at Pitt County, I guess they're using Ficklin Stadium at ECU. They are. Very large venue. I don't know that we have anything that large here in New Hanover County. Um, I just know that what I have to go by is what the governor's order says and this FAQ. And I, like everybody else, when I read the governor's order that educational institutions were um, exempt. I got very excited until I saw the frequently asked questions where it does say it was not intended to allow for large in-person events such as graduation ceremonies. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't define what large is. Um, is large more than 25? I don't know. Um, I, I would hope that we could get some information back from the state, but I don't know that we will as far as defining that. Um, my, my priority is to keep people safe and to protect the public health as a whole. And 
I'm not sure how you could put adequate social distancing and things in place if you have a, a lot of people in an area. Does that make sense? It does, and, and I appreciate that. But looking specifically, if you were able to, um, you know, distance students six feet apart and distance their guests accordingly, you know, because I know Legion Stadium supports 6,000 people. Um, you know, for example, New Hanover, I think, has 350 graduating students. Um, you put those, if you were to put those on the field, put their guests, split them in half, you know, maybe do A through L and then M through Z. Is that not something that we could we could work through? Because I, I know I hear what you're saying, but but I've also heard from a lot of the principals too. Mm -hmm. Number one has always been to do a traditional graduation, understanding there's going to be some modifications. Um, I think everyone would agree with that. So I'm just instead of doing a drive by or a virtual, which no one wants a virtual. Um, a, a drive-by, I'm just hoping there's a way that we can, as a board, figure out a way to, to split them up. If we do 100 kids at a time and allow guests, it may take a little longer, but it's going to at least give those 100, 100 kids the ability to have a traditional graduation, whereas it might not be a right. They've been in school for 13 years now. That, that's, that's, to me, um, that's what they deserve. And I don't know if there's a way to do it for, and, and get pu the public health satisfied with it, um, but I'd love to, to explore it. Because I know Brunswick, I think it's Brunswick that's doing it. Um, what do we have? Dare County that's going to do it. Wayne County is going to do it. Lenore County is going to do it. And Pitt County. So there's five counties just in, uh, just, sorry, not Brunswick, sorry, Pender. Um, there's five counties just in the eastern North Carolina that are considering some sort of traditional graduation. So I think if we can do that, I think that's, and I think that makes everyone happy as long I understand safety is always a concern, but we, if we can take as many precautions as possible and give them a traditional graduation, I think we should, we deserve that to, um, to our students. Well, and I would certainly not disagree with that, Mr. Workman. And I will tell you, I, I don't know that um, representing public health on the task force, I'm there to give information and to provide guidance and advice. I don't really have any authority to tell the school system what they have to do. Um, I've just been sharing what we've gotten from the governor's office, from the updates we've gotten, the type of guidance that we've gotten. I agree, Pender County, I'm not sure what Pender County is doing. I live in Pender County. Um, I got the email saying that we're gonna have traditional graduation, but I spoke to a parent of a senior and I asked her what that meant. She said she has no idea. So I'm not <laughs> sure what, what that's gonna look like. So she as a parent hasn't heard yet. Um, but I, whatever the school board decides to do, my priority in public health is to just do everything I can to make sure that whatever you do that we keep people as safe as we possibly can so i guess what i'm saying is we're going to be there to support you from a public health standpoint to do whatever we can to keep people as safe as we can um keeping in mind that you may have a a a number of folks who from the graduating groups who maybe i don't know if the children would feel that way but the parents may not be so hip on having an in-person graduation so you may have to have a something alternate if you if the school board decides to go that way uh, some type of alternate plans for those children or those parents who would not feel safe being in a large gathering but from my understanding and you y'all feel free to correct me but from my understanding the school board will have the ultimate decision which means any decision that's made and any um i don't want to say ramifications but i guess ramifications from that is is what the school board will have to address um again knowing that public health is going to be there to support you but we just want to do what's going to be the the safest thing for the community yes ma'am and I, and I understand that having an alternative to the ones that don't feel comfortable going whether it be video or something like that, absolutely. I think that's something, if we were to go to a traditional route to provide some sort of um, live video feed or, or something like that would would hopefully be utilized for those not wishing to attend. Uh, Ms. Stagner, um, Ms. Turner mentioned that if the board makes, when the board makes a decision that any potential ramifications would would be um something the board would want to consider is there an opinion that you would like to share regarding that can you make sure she's off mute deborah stagner thank you um i certainly think that the board should be cognizant of potential, you know, concerns if for safety, if there was um, 
an incident as a result of people being together at a graduation. Um, I, I think I know I know that all of you want to keep your students and your staff safe. Um, and if there is guidance um, from the governor, an executive order from the governor, and, and then interpretive guidance that says it's not safe to have a large in-person graduation, then I think that's certainly something that um, requires very serious consideration and, and to be taken um, to take be taken very seriously. Ms. Stagner, I know there was also guidance given on protesters um, as well. And that guidance seems to kind of run counter to what the governor is saying about graduations, correct? I'm not sure I'm familiar with the guidance about protesting. Um, like I said before, I, I, I think that the initial guidance or the, the initial language in the executive order said that it doesn't apply, the mass gathering limits don't apply to educational institutions. That was later um, an, an effort to clarify that by saying it was not intended to apply to graduations. And then there's a statement about recommendations for alternative graduation ceremonies and the directive that it also needs to be in compliance with North Carolina DHHS and DPI guidelines. It, there are a number of different documents that really have to be read in conjunction with each other. I think the bottom line is that um, there, there certainly are risks in having something that does not comply with the governor's direction. And I apologize if there's, I'm getting some feedback and I apologize if that's in, impacting my sound quality. Could we not require everybody to wear a mask? Mr. Ravenbark, that's that's what Pitt County is doing. Pitt County has has bought um, they bought each student a mask, and then they're requiring any of the guests to wear masks. And if they don't wear it, they get escorted out of the stadium. They get, they get kicked out. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Stagner, how would that what Pitt County is doing, or if we had a hundred people um, at Legion Stadium or wherever, how would that not violate the governor's executive order? Even if we wore masks, even if we could maintain six feet of distancing, wouldn't that still violate the prohibition on mass gatherings? Mr. Bollier, I think if you look at the, the prohibition on mass, mass gatherings, he says no more than 25 people. The, the or, I think we would all agree the governor's order is, is not a strong order. Um, he says no more than 25 people um, in a gathering, yet there's no set determination about a space requirement for a gathering. I mean, you look at the beach, um, I, I, there's a lot more than 25 people on the beach. Um, I know they're hanging out in groups of 25 and then the next group of 25 and the next group of 25. So if we can do something that we can actually have individual groups where we separate those people, those groups, a student being an own group by six feet and, and we can do that, and there are guests separating two people by six feet. I, I think we're, we're within the guidance, and we're doing everything necessary, especially the requiring of, mats, of masks to minima, minimize the risk. And, and that, that's, that's my opinion. I understand there's risk. There's risk in anything you do. Um, but I, the, it's, it's, not, it's not our job. But and I, I, I get that, but it's not our job to manage the risk on the beach. It's our job to manage the risk in the school system. And if it's saying yes, here right. the, exemption, the exemption was not intended to allow for large in-person events such as graduation ceremonies, I don't really see how you can get around that sentence in the FAQs. Well, so, I, I would say, and I understand that, but Pitt County has actually told the governor's office they're doing this. Both of their senators have, have opined that it's, it's within the order um, so that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're looking at the order, translating the order and, and having those. Um, it's our job to provide safety to our kids, but we also have to look at what's important to our kids too um, and, and figure out a, a, a good balance for that. What is um, Wake County doing? What is Wake County? I didn't talk to Wake County. What, what did y'all, who talked to Wake County? Based on the information I've received, Wake County is doing all virtual graduations. 
And we know no one in New Hanover County wants virtual graduations, correct? Well, yes, sir. <laughs> no, that's preferred not to, but we don't know that nobody wants to. I mean, that's sort of a broad statement. It was, four, it was fourth on the questionnaire, correct? No, I'm, I'm just saying, no, Sorry. you can't make that it, broad it statement. Was the, it was the least preferred option. Yes. There you go, <laughs> the least preferred. Are there, do we, have you heard of any counties that are delaying in-person graduations? Until... Uh, Brunswick County is. Brunswick County is doing a virtual graduation with a in-person graduation as soon as possible. Huh. Which, I mean, I don't know best option either but I just think as a board if we can um, speak with public health and come up with a solution um, that we can allow as a traditional graduation as possible while taking appropriate precautions I think that's something we should consider Ms. Turner in your expert opinion is it safe to have uh, that type of gathering is Ms. Turner on? I, I am. I'm trying to decide how best to word my answer. Um, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> please, honest. um, honestly, I, I don't know that it is. Um, again, I agree with, uh, with the, this East step that it, it's your responsibility to protect those students at that ceremony as opposed, I mean, I totally see what you're saying about Wrightsville Beach or Carolina Beach. Um, but that's again, not your responsibility. I just, there's no way to guarantee protecting everybody in that stadium. People are um, asymptomatic and they're positive. People with breathing issues maybe can't wear a mask. They have asthma, they cannot wear a mask. Are you gonna tell them they can't watch their child graduate? So I think you just open yourself up to a lot of um, possibilities of things that you're gonna have to address. So I guess my answer to you is, I don't know that you can keep everyone uh, no, I do know that you can't keep everyone safe. That's what, I, that's what I would say from a public health standpoint. And again, I'm going back on what, you know, kind of relying on what the governor's order said. Um, I'm sure it was done in conjunction with Dr. Mandy Cohen at the state. So I don't even know if I answered your question like, like you needed me to. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, I appreciate it. I think it's safe to say that no one wants to say that this isn't possible. And I, I, I think we all appreciate the work of this committee. It's it's a big challenge to get here. Uh, well, that, that's not, Ms. Eastep, what you said, that you said that this isn't possible, that's not accurate, right? Uh, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm, let me, let me correct, correct, is that what you, correct what I said? Is that what you're saying, that this isn't possible? No, I'm saying that, I don't even remember what I just said. What did I just say? Nobody said no one wants to say that this isn't possible. I think it, everyone is, is recognizing what a challenge this is. Mm -hmm. so, excuse Three. me, I'm a bit muffled because I am masked. <laughs> so I, just, I, I think it, what everyone is recognizing is what a challenge this is. It is. So I, I, we do, I, I, go ahead, David. I think, I think, I think you know, I, I want those kids to walk I really want them to walk more than anything in the world. I had kids at my house this weekend that graduated from college that didn't get to, and I understand how they feel, but I also understand the liability that we're talking about. And it's a matter of juggling the liability and what you want and, you know, and I, I don't know the answer to it. And it's beyond just the liability is people's health. Uh, well, there were I mean, five new, that's I mean, the liability. Well, if that's the word you want to use, that's fine. But to me, it's, it's just basically keeping people safe and healthy. Okay. Right. Stephanie, you're muted. No. Can you hear me now? Yes. There you go, yeah. Yep. Here you go. Um, just some of my thoughts on this. It's absolutely heartbreaking, you know, what the, the seniors have lost this year. And I, it, it, I, I hate it for them. This has been just a tumultuous year. 
and and so many memories and things have been missed and um you know more than anything i would love to say yes let's do traditional graduation let's make it safe but then what would happen if someone dies after being at one of our graduations a family member a student um, i don't want that responsibility resting on my shoulders that we could have prevented that and i think that's what this comes down to is the risk is so great and it's so frustrating because this is invisible no one knows who's at risk and who, who is asymptomatic. Uh, it's, it's just an impossible situation. But at the end of the day, we're talking about almost 4,000 kids that are graduating and that's something to celebrate and to be celebrated, but we have to do it in a way that's not putting our community and our family members at risk. And, and I just, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to defy, I know the governor's order is a, a bit confusing but I do think that what it's saying is we shouldn't be doing this. And I, and I, and I understand that. And that's obviously what you're trying to work to. Um, that's what that's what the problem is. I mean, you want to give that graduation, but you also want to be safe. Um, trying to find that balance is what we're trying to do. It just seems to me, you know, we've opened up schools, um, not the students, but the staff. You know, we're allowing staff to get back to normal, whether it be you know, teaching in the school, cleaning the schools out, cleaning classrooms out. We've started that process of opening back up. So continuing to stay closed or not allowing a traditional graduation, um, we can't, we can't you know, guarantee that any staff member is going to be safe uh, because people are asymptomatic, just like Ms. Turner said. Um, so any person meeting any other person could potentially be an issue. Um, I understand when you have a mass gathering, trying to limit those people, the fewer, the better. And I think that's why, you know, looking at areas of, of keeping people separated by six feet um, and doing that traditional graduation that or trying to do some, a modified traditional graduation graduation that gives it makes everyone takes the most precautions possible while at the same point giving the students what they want. So, no, I understand where you're coming from, but that's just just my opinion. Any other comments or questions? And so to summarize, yes, this is a very challenging yes. matter. Um, I wish that there would be a way to make everyone happy. I don't know that there will be such a solution. What, what I am especially proud of is the way that the task forces have operated and the manner in which everyone um, is taking this seriously. And members of the board, I, I do appreciate your comments and your, and your insight this evening. Uh, this is a very difficult matter and we will bring you back um, on June 2nd, something for you to consider. What, what is, and real quick question, Dr. Burns, is, is the administration making recommendations or, or how is that going about? We, we will bring you a, something to consider on June 2nd. Yes, sir. Does the administration make recommendations to the task force? The, the task force is informing the recommendation that will be brought forward. Yes, yeah, so to, tomorrow we have um, what we believe will be our two final meetings. And from that conversation, from that discussion, based on all the guidance we have, all the information that we have, the task force will draft that recommendation and then it will be my plan to again um, provide you with just a brief overview of the process on June 2nd and then um, we will have one of our students bringing to you um, additional information about um, how this how we arrived at the recommendation and then making um, bringing information to to the board to inform your decision um, so Truly, in my opinion, the recommendation that um, will be made will be derived directly from what students believe very strongly, um, given the guidance and the limitations that we have in front of us, um, would be the best way forward for them and their other um, senior classmates. Okay. And, I, and I'm sure y'all have already talked to them about Pitt County and all the other counties that are having traditional graduations, so I look forward to seeing it to see their recommendation. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smith. <clears throat> item number four, item B, dress code review, policy 8520. Uh, we had a dress code commi uh, committee made up of Chairperson Nelson Boyer, um, Judy, uh, uh, Board Member Judy Justice, and uh, several other individuals. And I would like Mr. Bullier to talk about the recommendations coming out of that committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, last July, uh, we formed a dress code committee uh, to look at ways where we might improve policy 8520. It'd been about four years since its last revision. And we wanted to look at a few areas in particular when we started, uh, like leggings, um, <coughs> you know, length of dress. Um, but the uh, school system uh, reached out to some of our students and they sort of informed some of what we were doing. And we came up with a comprehensive uh, policy proposal that we were all set to release in, uh, I believe, early February. And uh, because of the turmoil and the uncertainty in the system at that time, uh, the issue sort of floated to the back burner. Um, and now with COVID-19, uh, I don't feel, and uh, I've spoken with several board members, I know uh, it doesn't seem right to put more weight onto the scales. Um, we, we really wanna wait to give this policy its justice, its due, and to allow people to weigh in, to contemplate what it would look like. Um, However, there are some issues in that policy that, two in particular, that I felt uh, should be addressed and could be addressed really easily. Um, Max Stoneman, a uh, senior at Isaac Bear Early College, uh, came, he spoke to this board, he was on the committee, and you know he talked about the issue of uh, non-gender specific clothing um, and we talked about that in the committee. We thought it was really important. Uh, it was something that each student mentioned as being somewhat problematic. And so I thought we could add to 8520 a line that says simply, and this is what the committee recommended, New Hanover County Schools believes clothes are not gender specific. Uh, I think that one line would do a lot for so many of our students who you know, have been uncomfortable about how they choose to dress. Um, and leggings. Um, I don't know if any of you saw the article in Star News, but uh, one of our uh, members of that committee, Natalie uh, Atento, she was passionate about getting rid of those. Um, and so our policy proposal does not include the word leggings. And again, I don't want to do the whole policy proposal because I don't think that would be a good idea. But I think these two issues are not really controversial. I think they're extremely important. And when kids come back to school, we need them learning, focused, and engaged. Getting these two issues through the policy committee would help them do that. Can I say something also having been on the committee? In fact, I will. Right. I would like to thank all the parents, counselors, teachers, and administrators, not just the students that came to our meetings. And it was quite a Friday, a uh, very representative of the district. They worked hard. Uh, at some point, we do need to look at the work because it was so good. Um, in fact, at this point, since you want to delay the implementation and have it further looked at, I would say the whole thing needs to be left as is until we can take it up at a later time. Because to me and other people that were on that committee, it wasn't just the students, there were issues just as important as leggings. And uh, the gender neutral probably is the one thing that nobody had any complaints about, but the leggings did become an issue and it will become, if we do look at the new policy, something that will be under discussion. If we decide to take that out of there now and later on we come back and revisit it, it could cause a lot of problems. So the only thing that everybody totally agreed on were two things. And I know that this is not the time to talk about it necessarily. But it was a gender neutral, but there was also an issue about uh, the charging of the middle schools, exactly, 
for uh, dress down days. And that was more of an issue to people than leggings. So we're gonna start taking other issues and looking at them. That would even be more important. So right now, since we are going through so much, I would say we leave it as is. And if you do wanna put in a change to our current policy, it would just be the gender neutral until we can go more into depth uh, as far as the wording and what they're actually asking for. It's a great, I think it's a great policy. It's simple and fashions change. I don't even know why the word leggings are in there, but right now let's, because of, of all the discussion, it would be best, in my opinion, from setting in on all the meetings and being there for the final discussion, we should actually wait. Ms. Justice, I, I would I actually agree with you. Um, I think the gender neutral thing is something we need to change immediately. Um, but in terms of the leggings, leggings issue, uh, it's good taking it out, but it sounds to me like there is a substantial disagreement between board members as to how that discussion went. So let's have that disagreement in public. I'm, I'm fine. Well, here, I'm the, fine pushing for it right now. This is well. You know what? This is this is part of the issue is the fact that you weren't there at the final meeting, uh, and it would have helped, been helpful if you had been. Well, uh, but since you weren't able to attend, that is when we made the final decision. And we do need to look at the whole policy. It's a good policy, and I think you do agree with that. But right now, let's just, the one thing that everybody did agree on was a neutral position. And as I said, also about not charging for money for having what's called dress down days. But right now, I don't think because that's such a, uh, I guess you say, uh, important part of middle schools, we need to wait and talk about this in the future. And to a certain extent, leggings were too. I, you know, I agreed with taking it out, but at this point, we need to wait and have a discussion with policy and with other people. We already had a discussion. If, if you agree with taking it out, let's take it out. Uh, let's have it discussion. was not that simple. And I was there for the final discussion. And that's why I'm right now advocating for what they wanted to have the, to have it put in front of policy and let them discuss it thoroughly before we do this. Well, the, the policy proposal takes the word out. So if you'd like to do that, I'm all for it. Let's take it out. Uh, uh, as I said, the only thing I'm concerned about at this point is the one thing that everybody was in agreement on was the gender neutral. It would have been helpful if you'd been there during that last discussion. Madam Chair, if, if I might, this is Deborah. Um, the, the matter is on the agenda for information only. Um, so I'm not clear that there is an actually a, a specific policy revision that is on the table for uh, for consideration for approval for an action item there um, is, yeah, and, there's no and action. I also just wanted to remind board members since um, the public cannot see all of you if you could please introduce yourselves or identify yourselves before you speak and, and I'm not sure who the public can and cannot see because I've got strange pictures on my <laughs> screen that you was Judy Justice, by the way. Yeah. Can you see me? I don't know. I can see me. <laughs> uh, thank, this, thanks. Is, this is Jeanette. Me and Steph. I can only see Stephanie. So. Okay. Uh, Jeanette, I think that Dr. Burns can address those two topics with our principals until we submit this policy draft to the policy committee and we work with. Um, with Deborah and our folks in Raleigh that are working with us to revise our policies. Yeah, but it's, I, the timing is not good. Absolutely. I mean, I think we can tell our schools not to have those for money dress down days. I don't know if we actually have <laughs> a policy, but. Yeah, that, that's a procedure that, uh, or something Dr. Burns can address and ensure that doesn't happen. I, I really hope so because that was to everybody in the group was totally on the on committee were totally in agreement with that it was and I don't want to go into it now but that was just very difficult to even contemplate why it was even going on that uh, again Judy I I look for minutes for these meetings were they ever posted um I saw one set of minutes and beyond that I haven't seen any more Crystal Bowie was there and she was taking good notes the one set of minutes that I saw were excellent, but that was like from the first or setting, second meeting. I have not seen the minutes from the last one, and I know I asked for everything that I could possibly get hold of, and that I didn't get those. Oh, that would be helpful if she has them and she could get them posted. What? Uh, I'll be Doing addressing. An I'll job. be. Ad th this is. They can see me, right? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to introduce myself, but 
I'm Lisa. Lisa. Um, I'm going to be addressing that in my board chairperson's report. So we'll talk about minutes and postings of committee reports and all of that in a minute. But um, it sounds like we've got some consensus to, to at least put this on for the policy committee to discuss. Is that correct? Sounds like a good idea. Um, and then um, possibly move forward with um, just see, put it on for policy. Let's just uh, leave it at that. But I think that the conversation has been had and um, uh, Dr. Burns, do you need any further direction about the? The dress down days, I'm not familiar with that. Um, I am concerned that um, I understand the board's um, issue with this without something that's it has been in place, not knowing the genesis of it, without policy to address it. Um, uh, I'm concerned about that. I would prefer that this go to the policy committee and from there we take the next steps. And I think that that's also the case with the gender, ne gender neutral dressing because that, um, if you don't address it in policy, then you're leaving it open to the same thing happening that happened before. So I think putting this before the policy committee is probably the smartest thing to do. Ms. Easton, the only thing I would say is, um, I don't know, and maybe Ms. Dagner can let us know, is there some sort of legal issue in terms of um, not having gender neutral language? And that was the only reason why I was saying maybe put that or, or expedite that in the policy? Well, I mean, it's not something that has to be in policy. I think um, certainly if there's enforcement that would be in violation of some specific rights, that would be problematic. Um, but I, I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing in the current policy that, uh, there is specific guidance as to males and females and what what different genders ought to wear. Um, so I think certainly it, it is not a it's not a critical mandate that that language be in the policy. Although certainly um, you know it's it, it's uh, a good a good addition to the policy. But I don't think there's a legal mandate that it be added immediately. Okay. Any further discussion? So this will be going forward to the policy committee then. Um, and there's no action on this item. All right, thank you. Item five, superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My report is relatively short this evening. We continue to work as a district to support remote learning for students. And um, I, I have to say once again that the work of teachers to maintain contact with students and to address learning has been truly inspirational. Um, the, the, the difficulty of working remotely is one thing, learning remotely is another thing. It is not the same as face-to-face -face instruction and commendations can't be delivered enough for both the teachers who are working hard and the students and the families who are working hard under these circumstances. We learned last week that state emergency leave for employees has been extended through June 15th, which supports our continued remote work um, in many cases. We are now beginning to shift uh, to the close of this school year. Uh, we're not there yet, but we will have to continue um, with learning up to a point We'll then look at review, we'll deal with device um, return to schools, and we'll close this year. We are already having discussions about the opening of the 2020-2021 school year, especially with year-round calendars um, in, in play here. The directions and the guidance from DHHS regarding the opening of school and the governor's office is expected in the next week. Um, I participated in a conference call this morning and it was made clear that the governor will make the decisions regarding the restrictions and the guidance for the opening of school 
So we're looking forward to hearing that in the next few, few days. And that concludes my report this evening. All right, are there any questions from board members? Yep, all right, thank you, Dr. Burns. Item six, board chairperson's update or report. Um, I've got a few things on here. First is assembly update. Um, as most everybody knows, we are now using assembly much to Miss Tabitha Adams' delight. Uh, <laughs> and we have uh, a few things that are new to assembly now. Assembly is a board management um, online tool that we are using. The, the first thing is online voting, which I thought we were going to use today, but didn't work. Okay. So what we're going to be using in the future is an online voting tool that will allow uh, board members to log in their vote. Um, if we are still remote, you will, I will still have to do the roll call, um, but that will allow you to, um, to log in your vote for posterity purposes and we'll, we'll have that information available. So that is one update. Another update is that we have uh, the, um, what we anticipate having is a computer in the lobby. So when people come in, a, a QR code will be available on that computer screen. Um, individuals can scan uh, with their phone, um, their phone camera, that QR code, that QR, whatever you call it. Code. Code, thank mm -hmm. you. And that will immediately allow the agenda to pop up on their phone along with all the attachments so you can see everything that that we are seeing on the screen so it doesn't you don't need a a, a paper um a, agenda anymore uh so that's a really cool uh, neat update and then um the third one is the zoom meeting integration so um, it will allow miss adams to send the zoom um, invitation through uh, uh, through assembly so they're rolling out these updates more and more it allows again for that um, you know, that increased communication, that increased uh, accountability that, that everyone wants. Um, and it, it, it's, it's a nice tool. So we're, we're, we're working to get more and more of these pieces in place. Um, so if anyone has any questions, Ms. Adams is delighted to answer them like she did mine yesterday when I was trying to get on my iPad. The iPad's slightly different than a computer. Uh, you'll have to go through the app. So if anyone is using assembly on, on um, an iPad, you do have an app which is separate from the website. Um, but I hope everyone has found it useful thus far. Any questions about assembly or anything in general? Okay. Uh, item B, appointment to the Kafir Community College Board of Trustees. So as everyone knows, we have, or our board members know, we've got four appointments when we talked about this to the Kafir Community College Board of Trustees, one per year. Uh, the current um, appointee for this year, John Melia, uh, is not asking for reappointment. Again, we thank him for his service to the, to the college. Uh, we did advertise the appointment. We have uh, uh, the applica application process closed last week, and we have five applications. So we need to set a date for those interviews. And so what I will ask is for board members to, at this point, let me know what your calendars look like. If we can kind of get a date. That, that would be great. We've got a lot coming up in June. We have a lot of meetings. Uh, so, and we have until, I believe it's June 30th. Is that right, Tabitha? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we, we do have to get these interviews um, done by June 30th. So I don't know how everyone feels about um, the second week in June, third week in June. Okay, so the week of... Uh, June 15th, I'm going to be in training all week for um, District C. So I am not available Monday through Friday of okay. June 15th through the 19th. Okay. So why don't we look to the, if everyone's okay looking for, uh, looking to the week of June 8th. 
if you, um, rather than us sitting here and hammering out a date, is that a good week for everyone? That's a full week. We've got the uh, absolutely. We've got the policy thing on the ninth. We do. Yes. And then the fourth week, we've got students. Yeah, we have student hearings th that last week, and I hesitate to wait to that last week just because yes. it's so close to the 30th. Right, right, yeah. So I'm, I'm I mean, thinking. If, if we could, if we did it in the evening, the week of the 15th, I could be available. It's just I would, it would have to be, I think, after 4:30. Okay. If that week works better. Just as a tentative date, does does June 10th look okay for everyone right now? Well, it works for me. Yes. I can do. I can do that. I can too. Wait a minute, I might have to be singing that night. Hold on there. Singing? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> All right, why don't we tentatively set that, and then I will ask Tabitha to contact, uh, t contact you for a definite. So we'll just hold that date as the tentative date for those interviews. Okay? And then we'll talk about the, um, the, 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 the question list. We did have a question list uh, from last time. What I'd like is for um, you all to give me permission to talk to Julie Woodson, who is the head of the North Carolina Trustees Association, and she runs the trustee training uh, for all of the trustees uh, for the community college system. And I would just like her feedback on on what they would they like trustees to know. And uh, if it's if it's okay with the board, I would like to get her feedback on that, and just maybe we could come up with a question or two uh, based off of um, uh, what she would 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 like to see in, in terms of a knowledge base for for trustees. And we can add that to the list if you guys choose if you want to choose to to say it to ask those questions. We can, but I, I would like to uh, talk to her about it. So, Please, so this is Stephanie. I think that's a great idea. Okay. All right, great. I agree, if it's Jeanette, I agree. Yes, ma'am, I would agree with that as well. Okay, all right, I will I get that. Also. Great, um, so I will I will talk to Ms. Woodson and then um, I will figure out how to get that question list, um, we'll get that question list um, going to you all, okay? All right, North Carolina School Boards, uh, school boards uh action center we have two items for the school boards association the action center and then the membership dues so let's actually tackle item d first that is the membership dues and legal assistance fund this is something that we've um we've been a part of for i believe many many years and they have frozen the dues for this year um they're you can see, if you click on it, you can see what the, uh, the due, dues amounts are. There is a, this legal fund contribution, which I believe they've had in there for a while as well. Are there any questions or concerns about maintaining our membership to the NCSBA? Not as long as we got enough money to pay them. Yeah, that, that, that would be my question. In a year when we're going to be really stretching our funds. Um, we're not asking the commissioners for any additional money. Um, it, you know, there may be additional stuff needed for COVID-19. Um, do we really feel it's a good time to spend some discretionary money at this point without knowing what the future holds? I would argue that, you know, we've really leaned on the NCSBA through all of this. They've been incredibly helpful. Um, I, I think this is just one of those necessary contributions. We've paid we've paid them to to do that. They've they've done a great job, but I think we've paid a lot for the services too, right? Sure, certainly, but if we stop paying them, I don't think the services will keep coming. Aren't they, the, that's aren't true. they the ones? Aren't they the ones that? Too. Aren't they the ones that found all our uh, candidates for superintendent? Yes, they are. Then we need to hang on to them. I know, but we that service how much did that service cost they did a good job but i think we paid them a, a pretty good price to do that as well and we've got good results and we yeah. we can't don't know what's going down the line thank goodness we have had them over the last year that's for sure and their training's been invaluable in many other ways a lot of things 
and that's fine. I just think that we can give donations to whoever we want. I just think that when we start cutting funds from students and teachers, we may have to justify why we're, we're giving the charitable donations. And, that's and, not and charitable. They do their and, work. And, and, and David, hmm? under normal circumstances, I would agree with you a thousand percent, but under what we've been through, I think we need them right now. And I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say we need them. I'm sorry. I, I would have probably four or five years ago, I, I would have maybe agreed, but the NCSBA has been such a, a, an incredible partner to this school district um, this past year and a half. I, I mean, I, I can't even, I, I, I can't even imagine where we would be. I, the person sitting to my left would not be here and we didn't pay a thing uh, for, for, for that um, interim superintendent search. So they, there, there is training that they provide. There is, we have access to many things because of the NCSBA. Um, so again, I, I, I take your point. Um, it is not an easy thing to say that we're dedicating this much funding uh, to membership dues. But um, in this case, I would say it is, it, it is very necessary. So what do we need to do now? Uh, nothing. I don't, I don't believe that we would need a, a motion for this, uh, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, Ms. Dagner, do, do we need a motion for this amount? Well, it, I mean, <laughs> The, um, it's, it's on here for recommendation for discussion. I think if there's a, uh, and certainly the amount isn't a, enough that would require a board vote, but I think the um, decision whether or not to uh, continue membership, if that's the question being posed, then I would, um, I would say that that would be the, the motion. I think I'm a little confused. Are you saying that if, if there is that question, because it sounds like to me that there is consensus. There is if there's if there's consensus that there's not going to be any change in the membership, then I think that's fine to go to go forward. If there's any um, desire to change the the board's membership, then then there ought to be a vote. Okay. So we need to vote. It, well, is there is there anyone oh. that? wants to make a motion or is everyone okay with going forward? I, I guess I'd, I'd call for a vote just simply because if there are other um, potential memberships that could save us money, it, it's just, I, under, I, I understand the point where they've been very helpful, um, but from a local perspective um, with the cuts that we may have to make just for next year, I'm not saying this is for, for the future, but just for next year, um, I just think that we need, I believe we need to be a little bit tighter stewards of our, our financial, our, our funds for the next year. All right. So Mr. Wartman, what is your motion? I'll, I'll, I'll make them. You're making, y'all are making a motion to keep the current funds, correct? No, there's no, there's no motion. There's just, we are keeping the current funds. This is below the amount. So uh, if you're yeah, making well, a motion. I would make, I would make a motion that we look into actually decreasing um, the funds that we give to the school board association, whether it be through a different type of membership or, or something like that um, for the next year, given the financial crisis that we could find our schools in. Uh, uh, David, I will tell you, there's no other type of membership. We did look at, at that in the past. There's only one. But is there a second to uh, Mr. Wartman's motion? Is there a second? Uh, it doesn't sound like there's a second. So there is no I, second. My motion is noted. I think everyone knows where I stand. All right, the motion fails because of no second. All right, so the recommendation is that this, uh, we will be remaining members of the NCSBA. All right, so moving back to item C, the North Carolina School Board Action Center. 
this is a um, an amount that the, um, the NCSBA has asked us, or the Action Center has asked that boards um, contribute based on size um, to be able to for them to employ a third lobbyist. Um, our board has declined in the past to contribute. Um, I don't believe we've ever contributed to this. Um, so I would need a motion. What is this for, Lisa? Uh, the, NC, the NCSBA, or the North Carolina School Board's Action Center um, has, has two lobbyists, and in 2013 they hired a third lobbyist and asked school boards to contribute um, to that third lobbyist. Okay. And so they started, they started basically doing this option billing um, to school boards around the state. And um, as of now, um, at, you know, our, our county has never, our, our board has never, um, has always declined to contribute to that cause. Okay. So, um, but it is up to this board to decide whether or not they want to um, to contribute and and you can read the information that's attached what they say that third lobbyist uh, the the value of that third lobbyist what they provide that they would do some more local lobbying um, um, more in-depth lobbying for your specific for our specific um, county so okay madam chair I remember this coming up last year I voted for it then um, I think that you know with times being what they are, as uh, Mr. Wartman alluded to with our last discussion, I would not support uh, giving additional funds at this time. Um, and I last year was with uh, Nelson, and, and I agree with him right now, in fact, that considering what we're facing, this is not a good time to start getting involved in paying that particular fee. Is this requiring a vote or just uh no, it's the, same, it's the same as last time. If if anyone wants to make the motion to vote for it, you know, to to recommend that we we contribute, then that's that's fine. If not, then um, uh, then we'll move on. Okay, thank you. Let's just move on. Okay, yes. <laughs> I agree. It works for me. All right, last item on the list is the committee report transitioning to assembly. Uh, this is something that I was talking to Tabitha about today. Um, what I would like to do is uh, see that we eventually get all of our, our board level committees um, transitioned over with the minutes and um, information over to that um, to our assembly site so that we do have access um, and uh, the community has access to all of that information. Uh, so that what I was thinking would be a goal time would be July 1st and I don't know if that is um, ambitious so for those of you who are on these committees if you want to take a look and speak with the, uh, the, fo the folks who are keeping the minutes for those committees and see and work with those individuals and make sure that they can you know work with assembly and uh, work with the site uh, to get all the all that information uploaded so that that way it is accessible uh, and if you run an NT pro that's uh, July 1st is not a hard and fast deadline it's just a, a, a goal um, but that way we can get everything on there and and uploaded and available and there's not any confusion about where where it's located uh, we do have several committees that are um, they're, they're either ad hoc committees or they're not committees of the board, but board members are liaisons, such as the um, Legion Stadium Committee. So if you are a liaison on, on a committee like that, if my thought was if you want to prepare a, um, if, you, if you get materials from those committees, if you want to um, provide those to, to Tabitha, she can upload them to the assembly site. Or if you want to provide a, a, an outline of what happened at those committee meetings, that could also be uploaded. So any information you want to provide so that we have that available and, and again on the site, I think that would also be helpful because in the past we haven't had that information um, a, a, available. So 
Are there any questions about that? No, ma'am. All right, great. That is all I have, which was a lot. We have nothing for item seven, consent. Uh, yes, we do. We have, sorry, personnel. We have one item for personnel. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, I request um, approval of the personnel list as presented this evening. All right. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve the personnel item as presented? Move for approval. There's a motion from Mr. Boyer. Is there a second? Second. There is a second from Mr. Rivenbark. Ms. Adams, how do you vote? Aye. Ms. Adams is an aye. Mr. Boyer? Aye. Ms. Justice? Aye. Ms. Nichols? Aye. Mr. Rivenbark? Aye. Mr. Wartman? He's, not, he's muted. Mr. Wartman? David, David is muted. Can he be uh, on uh, No, uh, yeah, I don't right. know if I'm, yeah. Aye. Aye, and I am, I am an aye, so it's seven nothing. Thank you. All right, uh, we, are, we do require an additional time for a closed session. So is there a motion to go back into closed session? Are we, do we need a motion? Yes. We do, okay, sorry, thank you. Is there a motion to go back into closed session? For the reasons stated. Previously. For the reasons stated previously. Move for closed session. All right, Mr. Boyer made the motion. Is there a second? Second, Stephanie Adams. Ms. Adams was a second. Uh, Ms. Adams, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Boyer? Aye. Ms. Justice? Aye. Uh, Ms. Nichols? Aye. Mr. Rivenbark? Mr. Wartman? Aye. I vote aye. And we have a consensus six nothing to go into closed session. Thank you. Do we need? We've got four? We've got four. All right. We've got four. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. There's a motion for Mr. Boyer. Is there a second? Second. All right, I think I heard Mr. Rivenbark first. Um, yep. Ms. Ad Adams, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Boyer? Aye. Uh, Ms. Justice? Uh, Ms. Nichols? Uh, Ms. Mr. Rivenbark? Aye. Mr. Wartman? All right, and I say aye, so that is four. Is that right? If I can count. All right. Did she join? Uh, Ms. Nichols, we just made a motion to adjourn. How do you vote? Aye. Yeah, aye. Aye. All right. That's five for adjournment. All right. The, the ayes have it. <laughs> Thank you all very much. We're done. Thank you.